Yeah. All right, and uh, that was Red Bull. We are one, and uh, we have Corey on the line. And uh, Corey, how you doing? Hey there, I'm doing good, thank you. How you doing? I'm doing good too. I, I uh, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Thanks for uh, sharing with us today. I'm kind of uh, both intrigued and uh, wondering what's going on with the Buffalo Field campaign. And I know that you were saying that you guys are heading to Europe, so I'd love to hear more. First, give you a chance to introduce yourself, and hopefully, Good Shield will be joining us uh, shortly. All right, there you go. Yes, yes. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to share with you our uh, our works to help uh, preserve the North American buffalo, and a uh, chance to share our journey, our upcoming journey. We leave tomorrow for Europe to connect with the European buffalo and their supporters. So, can we talk a little bit about the, about the European buffalo? Um, what? Uh, I'm not really familiar with uh, that species, and I'm kind of intrigued to to know a little bit more about uh, the buffalo and their uh, and their connection with uh, the field campaign. Well, over the years, the the buffalo field campaign has been stationed in Yellowstone, front lines with those last wild ones of Yellowstone, and uh, we've worked with scientists and uh, senators and tribal leaders and people from all over the world. And uh, and that will continue until that Yellowstone herd is allowed to roam free, you know, uh, wherever they want, pretty much. That's what Buffalo Field Campaign does. And uh, since its beginning, I've been part of the campaign with, uh, with uh, you know, many other great, great individuals who have given them li- their lives for that cause there. Right. And uh, I also work with Pateo Yate, which is a group that was also formed by the founder of Buffalo okay, Field Campaign. Hey, 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 hey. Right. Her uh, name is Rosalie Wilfunder. She uh, she's my adopted mother, and uh, she passed away this past summer. And uh, she she led a group called Pateo Yate, whose goal was to unite tribes to help bring back the buffalo and protect that Yellowstone herd. So we we decided, Goodshield and I decided that the importance of the European buffalo is, is important enough for us to go figure it out for ourselves. Like they say, you don't know something until you need it, you know. So we're going to meet these European buffalo and, um, you know, see what comes out of that, that connection. And Goodshield did join us. Uh, how you doing, Goodshield? Hi, I'm doing good. Trying to find a good reception spot here. Yeah, in Nevada City, California. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you great. And uh, okay. we're just uh, talking. We're we're here with Corey. Just, uh, I was telling Corey, like I'm just kind of intrigued myself about the uh, European buffalo. I I know uh, um, they brought over cattle. I wasn't sure uh, the species of buffalo that's there and the connection uh, with the field campaign and. And uh, it's kind of exciting for you guys to be going over there making that. Uh, to me, like, uh, it's a healing journey going, you know, full circle back around and, and uh, connecting with uh, the ancestors over there that um, brought the, the cattle. That's, that's a huge problem for the buffalo, buffalo over here. And so yeah. to make that connection and that healing. And uh, I loved your song. I, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about that and uh also the what's the title of that song and uh and we can go from there just uh thanks uh for joining us and uh i'm gonna give you a little chance to introduce yourself and and uh yeah all right well good day everybody my name is good shield aguilar i am uh oglala lakota from my dad's side and pasqua yaki from my mom so i've been involved with the buffalo field campaign since uh, about 2001 i actually met my aunt rosalie for the first time she was touring with a film called The Buffalo Bath or Buffalo War, which was a, a documentary about a 517 mile walk that she did from Rapid City, South Dakota, to Gardner, Montana, and um, you know it was she called it her spiritual protest, and she did it in the middle of winter when the buffalo were migrating because she wanted to do it in solidarity with you know what the buffalo have to endure every winter you know when they're just following their natural migration paths. And um, I actually wrote that song, Red Road Home, 
the day after I met her. So um, I knew right away I needed to get involved. So, uh, you know, she pulled me in right away and, you know, I haven't, haven't looked back or regretted anything <laughs> to this day as far as, you know, stuff with the Buffalo and, you know, being vocal about what's happening with them. And, you know, they are our last genetically pure link to, uh, you know, the original 40 to 60 million strong, the original herd that wandered all around this continent. So, um, yeah, I just returned from Yellowstone about four days ago, and um, unfortunately this year they got seven, 700 buffalo. They still plan on taking 200 more, so um, hazing has just started again, this time in Yellowstone, not in Gardner, but in West Yellowstone. That's the other uh, entrance to the park. So uh, we definitely need, if, any, if anybody has some free time um, and you want to get out there to the Buffalo Field Campaign, we'll feed you three times a day. And we just need people to stand out there with video cameras and, you know, document what happens with, you know, our sacred relatives out there. And it's a really, really nice community. And, um, and you know, it's, it's kind of hard to watch what these buffalo have to endure. But um, I think, you know, having a solid group out there, we, we keep each other strong, you know, just like the buffalo. Yeah, every time I, uh, I'm following following you guys uh just trying to share get the awareness out there that uh you know it's like um everywhere there are indigenous people they try to take out the food and uh like here we're, we're fighting for the salmon's life and that connection and the buffalo i mean if, if it's just uh it's a very important connection to the to the people to the land uh um I just uh, my heart hurts every time that uh, I know that we're we're losing left and right, and uh, there's no reason for it at all. Um, I know that there's a, a lobbying interest in cattle. I know that, and uh, being able to roam free, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and the the myth behind that, if we could. Oh, you mean um, why the buffalo are being killed? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they've been using the excuse of brucellosis for a long time now, even though there's never been a documented case of a buffalo giving the disease to a cow. Um, but it's all, it all comes down to subsidized cattle grazing. You know, it's the same reason why the horses are being killed, too, because cattle ranchers want that grass for their cows. And it's actually a huge welfare project. Um, these cattle ranchers in the 1930s were allowed to come in and graze, subsidized grazing, um, they paid a dollar eighty for two cows to graze, and to this day, I mean, they shouldn't really even be there legally, but they're they're still holding on to these subsidized grazing allotments, and they're still paying the exact same amount for two cows as they were in the thirties. And that's something that really needs to end because uh, people knew that three to four million dollars a year was spent on, you know, the subsidized grazing plan, and also uh, hurt them being able to legally harass buffalo, I think people would really try to work towards changing that, you know, because I think if you, we took the money away from them, they wouldn't be able to get away with this. And unfortunately, that's what it comes down to is money. And, you know, it's not the disease. It's not anything else other than... Well, and then that's the other reason they're putting out there, too, is that they're trying to say that there's too many buffalo in the park. So that's why they want there to be only 3,000 buffalo is really a dangerous, dangerously low number. Um, you know, a good scientist can tell you that the park within the boundaries can easily sustain ten to twelve thousand, no problem. And that's not counting the perimeter of the park, which is all public land, which is actually where the buffalo want to be right now because right now they're giving birth. There's a lot of a lot of babies being born right now. Um, last week when I was out there, two we at least witnessed two babies get really hurt and and you know usually when they get a broken leg or something they have to euthanize them and um yeah it's really hard to watch that kind of thing but yeah i, I mean it comes down to just subsidized cattle grazing that's why this is happening yeah and uh can we talk a little bit about i know uh when you guys came up on the road show through olympia last year there was a document for endangered species uh to protection of uh the the last of the the herd is how is that going and uh is there still a petition going around that uh our listeners uh, that that are uh, feel uh moved to be able to sign 
Yeah, we have the document on online on our website, uh, buffalofieldcampaign.org. People can go online and sign it. Um, we've pretty much been waiting for the science to, that proves that these are the last genetically pure free-roaming buffalo left. So it would classify the Yellowstone herd as a distinct culturally endangered uh, or ecologically endangered species right now. Um, I mean, technically, the you know, Endangered Species Act would classify them as an ecologically extinct species. I mean, it, it's, the numbers are so low compared to what they used to be. Um so that's what we've been pretty much waiting for, that science that proves this. Um, you know, I, I've been to Helena many times during the hearings. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll flip-flop any issue to, you know, that would uh, justify their actions. They're trying to say that how do we know they're not, you know, mixed with beefalo, they're not technically wild. And then, you know, if we have something that goes against that, they'll, they'll try to say the opposite of it. I mean, they're just kind of, you know, just... <laughs> They'll say whatever they have to say to, to uh, enforce their management plan. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I feel I, I know that some tribes who are involved with the hunt are kind of on the fence as far as getting them listed as an endangered species because I know and they're concerned that if that does happen, they wouldn't be allowed to hunt buffalo. But um, I mean, at this point, we need to use any tool that we can to help this herd thrive because, you know, eight over 8,000 have been killed since 97. And then that herd can ease, they could easily be up to 10,000 right now strong. And um, so we feel actually, you know, an, another thing that they're trying to say about the Buffalo Field campaign is that we're against hunting and we're um, against relocation, but that's not true at all. Um, we're just, basically against the treatment of the way the, you know, these buffalo are treated. And uh, a lot of people don't know that before they're even allowed to be relocated to a reservation or tribal land, they have to uh, be quarantined anywhere between five to eight years. And during that time, they're tested repeatedly by APHIS, which is the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service. And they, they just do some really not cool things to the buffalo, you know, just all these experiments. I know they're currently, they separated, I think there's about 20 or 30 buffalo in a separate quarantine facility where they've been experimenting with a sterility drug called Gonicon. So that's another way that the parks and the Department of Livestock want to manage the buffalo is they want to sterilize buffalo. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a really complicated situation. And, um, you know, we feel that tribal people need to be more involved in this because uh, I feel like, unfortunately, there's a division because of race, which really shouldn't be there. And, um, you know, people need to remember that that actually this campaign was started by a traditional Lakota woman, you know, Rosalie Little Thunder. And um, also uh, Sidney Keith was involved, the Arbor Looking Horse, and many, many other tribal leaders are uh, not, not, Lately, I shouldn't say leaders, but just people who have a lot of traditional cultural knowledge and say so. Yeah. Very important people, you know, to us. Yeah, it's very important to um, talk about that because uh, I know that um, yourself and many of the people, Mike Meese and uh, many that have come through, that it's not about not wanting to feed the people. It is about the um, um, inhumane way that the buffalo are being treated. And... Uh, and the like what you just said like most of us don't know that don't know that they're they're being caged away i mean i've seen some of the video and it's just insane and it's that's not hunting you know that's uh like you said it's it's putting them in a cage and then taking them and then testing and testing and testing and uh they should just uh bring them and put, uh, bring them to the tribal lands and let the the people take care of it um i mean that's just my my personal opinion you know that the uh, I've seen the way that uh, our gov- the government, the United States government, has uh, treated the buffalo, and um, it's upsetting. It's very upsetting. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's ironic that uh, you know people get thrown in jail for mistreating a dog, yet you know thousands of buffalo are mistreated. <laughs> you know, and nothing. Nobody is held accountable for that, mm-hmm. which is why BFC exists. You know, we want all these agencies to be accountable 
held accountable for what they're doing. So, um, so getting back to your traveling, uh, you're bringing, that sounds like you're bringing the road show over to Europe. And, uh, what's that going to look like for you guys? You and I know Corey's going with you. Uh, who else is going with you? And, uh, what's that, what's that going to entail when you get over there? Well, it's actually, um, uh, you know, the two of us are going and, um, uh, my friend Mateo, who's actually contacted me from Poland, he actually lives right next to the Buffalo park there. Um, you know, his big thing is, trying to reawaken his own people, his Polish people, to the fact that they were buffalo hunters at one time. And it wasn't even very long ago. Um, you know, buffalo were all over Europe. And, you know, they pretty much lit the tribes of Europe lived nomadically following the buffalo just like they did here. And they were systematically killed for the exact same reasons, you know, to kind of subdue the the more nomadic tribal people. And... um I feel like it's really important to kind of connect these dots culturally because, you know, they're they're trying their best to preserve these buffalo. They say that they, they would completely be extinct if humans hadn't intervened. I know the Buffalo Park in Poland, I think, was started in the mid-1800s to preserve the last. I think there was only about 300 left, and there's literally no land for them to be on, you know, legally um, without being harassed, just like here. Um but also, um, yeah, the, the thing that actually, you know, when I started to talk to Mateo and, you know, he was inviting me to come out there, uh, he introduced me to uh, this movie called Cave of Forgotten Dreams, which is actually a really good documentary. You can find it on YouTube. But it documents all these caves that they're finding in France and Spain and Germany. And some of the oldest uh, art, cave art, is being found in these caves, and it's uh, paintings of people hunting buffalo, and it's also where they're finding the oldest shards of uh, obsidian tools. Also, um, uh, the oldest flute ever found was just found recently in Slovenia, which they also have buffalo there, but it's a flute made from bare bone, and uh, it's about 40, they think 40,000 years old. So, you know, I've always been fascinated by old, old cultures, you know, not just my own, but other cultures. So when I stumbled across this about 10 years ago, I, I knew that someday I'd want to go uh, check it out, you know, and, and bring this story to the United States because I feel like they're, they're pretty much the same story. And, um, you know, luckily there's a lot of rainbow warriors out there who are trying to preserve our, uh, our you know, our earthlings, our... Uh, old pagan roots and, you know, our ways of being connected with the earth and everything. Every, every animal, every creature, every plant needs to be here. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm going. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, and, yeah. uh, but it just, uh, to know, like you said, the, the links that, uh, we, you know, I know it's a phrase that's used a lot, but the, how we're all connected. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you could see it through, through the land. And, uh, you know, because it's always been about the land. And, uh, you know, when I just call it the disease, when it got to the shores here, you know, it, it perfected how it was uh, um, doing genocide. And yeah. so, you know, and they wanted the land and the land and the land. And so you know, the more that I look into, like, the legal aspects also of uh, how they did it, uh, you know, the most of us don't know like the tribes are still living under a 1934 um relocation act and so that framework is still here and it's it and it's still about the land it's about you know they want to possess the land they want to own the land and uh so you know they're trying to get rid of these links so they could do that that's the way i'm the way i the way i'm seeing it and to, to know that uh we are we all came from uh you know, there's an elder here that I love very much. His name is Roger Fernandez. And I asked him once, I said, what do we need to do? He said, we all need to get back to the indigenous root, and then we can talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's because it, you, you can see it clearly that this is what is uh, what has happened. 
So I just want to let people know you're listening to KAOS 89.3 FM Olympia. We're here with Good Shield and Corey. And I'll uh, give Corey a chance to chime in if you'd like. I just I would just like to know uh, for you guys to be able to share because there's a lot of information that we don't know. And there's a lot of misinformation about the buffalo. We did we did talk a little bit about uh, brucellosis. And, uh, you know, and, and to me, uh, when you know what the buffalo, when they were roaming free, the the land was better. We know that because they they were they would never eat in the same place, and then they they would uh, fertilize that place. And uh, uh, so, you know, the buffalo is good for the land. Good for the people. Good. Yeah. Uh, my Lakota teachers, they uh, you know they taught that the whole Lakota culture came from the buffalo culture. They taught the people how to live with the earth in harmony like that. And um, you were saying how, uh, you know, that unsatiable quest for land and the control of it is also a control of the economy uh, and the way the people live. In, in the old days, the economy was buffalo. Um, and I'm speaking for a uh, my Lakota relatives and also my European relatives. We know from the cave drawings, I'm going to show you talking about that, around 32,000 years ago, people were hunting buffalo. People were living in that economy, living with the earth and uh, living by the means of the buffalo. So I'm all about unity, uh, being a, a rainbow family member. Like that, I'm, I'm about uh, helping people see a common, a commonality, and the buffalo help us do that. You know, especially if there's a discovery of, hey, there's a European buffalo that looks just the same as the North American, and there's a people of Europe, and these people still exist, and these people aren't necessarily the conquistadors or the colonizers. These people have good hearts, and, and I, you know, I, I uh, have the honor of speaking to those people as a Rainbow family member. Most of Europeans, and like many other Europeans that have been on this planet for a long time, I have a little Native American blood in me, which I'm very proud of. And um, so I helped, you know, make this bridge from um, Rainbow people to that's my job. So I'm going over to Europe to do that great adventure with my yeah i'm just uh, excited for both of you and uh when we got a few more minutes i just wanted to know if there's anything on your hearts that uh we haven't shared uh people can go to the buffalo field and uh um check and i and i oh it's dot org i'm sorry and there is a buffalo field campaign endangered species act there's a place there where the petition is and uh they can see um, there's a legislative legislator 2015. You can also see some of the videos. Um, right. There was just a great movie called Silencing the Thunder that a uh, German film crew who we're going to be meeting with while we're over there made. That's a wonderful full-length documentary called Silencing the Thunder. gives a great multi-perspective view of the issue. And I want to throw one more thing, a project that we're working on, is to get out the word that the bison management plan that has been dictating the slaughter and the capture and the quarantining of these last wild buffalo is in the process of being rewritten. And the deadline for public input is June 1st. And so we're going around the world to let the world know that they can tell the Yellowstone Park Service and the United States government that they would like for this last wild herd of North America to roam free and unmolested. And so you can contact the National Yellowstone National Park to give your public input on it. And that's before you said uh, July? June 1st is the deadline. June so 1st. We have a month and a half, and I would love it if all the relatives and, and supporters of the Buffalo could put their, uh, their input in there. Let them know. Let them roam free. Let them roam unmolested. Let them become our economy again. Good shield. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any um, closing words or 
share with us? Um, well, we, we really need some volunteers right now. Um, I know I left a couple of days ago, and we had at least four other people leave because they you know, had other commitments. So if anybody out there is listening and wants to uh, experience uh, free-roaming buffalo, you know, most of the time it's beautiful out there and pretty peaceful, but um, you know, once this hazing starts, it changes. So we, we just need a lot of people out there. And you know, like I mentioned earlier, we'll feed you three times a day, we'll house you, teach you how to use uh, video cameras and... Um, you know, and just standing with the buffalo because the more people out there, uh, you know, the more nervous it makes the Department of Livestock, and they tend to be a little nicer if there's more people out there. But uh, they're not always nice <laughs> if there's only, you know, four of us out there. So, uh, yeah, I'm just really feeling that right now. I'm, you know, I felt a little strange driving away from Yellowstone with all that happening, but I know uh, some good, good hearts will make it out there, and, you know, we need to unify behind this and let the buffalo roam free absolutely and uh, again i appreciate you guys taking time with us and uh we'll get this out there uh in a little while uh, we'll podcast in a little while later and uh enjoy yourself and uh i would love to hear a report when you come back of, of uh, what's going on great yeah thank you people can stay in tune with us on facebook tail yate and Buffalo Field Campaign. We'll be uh, doing our best to keep everyone posted on the European Unity Trip. All right. And thanks so much for having us, Brian, and all your support of all the uh, great, great work that, that you help out. Yeah, and if you guys are close to uh, one of you, is, uh, I'm hoping one of you is close to Mike. Yeah, tell him to give him a big hug from us. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll probably see him next. So I, I definitely will do that. All right, thanks so much. You guys and, uh, have a good evening. All right, thank you. Until right. next time. Doksha. Right. Doksha. And you're tuned into KOS 89.3 FM. We're going to play Buffalo Wild by John Trudell. We'll be back. Here we go. been living with a fugitive inside of us, like buffalo wild under a buffalo sun, running in a closing in maddened world, racing against the predators of spirit, and facing off with progress as addictions, civilized destructions wanting habits, polite or violent, whatever it takes, with guns and laws and truth that lies. Domesticating the natural or harvest, threatened by what nature made free, with civilized rational aggressions, wreaking blood havoc. And no feeling of tomorrow or the ancient, in the plunderings of all our relations, the business of collateral damage, profiteering maximized in the carnage, running in a closing in maddened world, like Buffalo Wild under a Buffalo Sun. Sacred living reduced to looking to escape. Buffalo wild needing a buffalo roam. Between earth and stars breathing free. Following the future through the looking glass. Ancestor prayers praying to the buffalo spirit. And living with a fugitive inside of us. Feeling the human part of buffalo dreams. In the reality of all life is sacred with Buffalo Medicine as one of the gifts. 